So the last sketch we made was almost a month ago. And it's been a while since we worked through this sketch, right? And that was actually a little bit on purpose. Because when you leave your music for a while and then return to it, you listen to it with fresh ears. So we wrote this piece also based upon a reference picture, remember? And we were not really sure whether it was the best reflection of the image or not. But at this stage, that doesn't really matter. Remember that my main goal with this series is for you to write more music. There's a lot of stuff to work with here. Remember that when you make a sketch, you don't necessarily have to use all of it for the final orchestration product. You can take parts of it that you like the most and use, and you can rewrite stuff also, and you can create new lines on top of old lines. We're gonna probably abandon some of these ideas today, I can hear already, and probably also add stuff on top of this, just so you know. So I think I'm gonna start with the harp, actually. And why do I want to do that? Well, it's because harp in mezzo piano, like low down, dynamically speaking, has this certain round, almost a little bit like dull, soft quality to it. So I like to use the harp sound as a reference, so to say, to capture that vibe. So what I just do, I mark the chords from the harp track and I find my harp, which is here. And then I copy it down and I see, okay, these are the notes that I have to work with. Of course, you have to listen to the samples now, your samples. How do they sound? Okay, so quite soft. I think we're gonna go a little bit more up in velocity. And I wanna see these accents on the notes here. You can see they're a little bit uneven, so I'm just gonna clean them up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go into the dynamics or the velocity, sorry, and just redraw them like that. So they're more soft and even. So what you do now is import the harp in your harp track, adjust the velocities, clean up these rolls in the beginning a little bit, then resume the video. All right, so we have the MIDI for now, at least for the harp. Let me go back to the sketch, and I think I'm gonna go with the melody voice, and it's on top here. Okay, so I edit the MIDI a little bit. Let's see, I have to choose legato for this. Yeah, that's okay. So now you record the flute like that. You can either pull just the MIDI down from this track, copy it in, or you can play it in if you have a more sensitive instrument like I've used here, then resume the video. So the question can be now, well, I have some material up in here in the sketch. How do I really go further with this? What do I choose to put where? So it's from the lower track here. I'm copying the lowest part of every note or every chord structure like that. Select them all, set them to bar three, copy. And then I'm going to put these guys into alto flute, I think. Let's just use the first six notes for now. So do that and then resume the video. So, so far we have stated the melody once here. So 
So it's tempting to just leave the flute playing everything alone. But we're going to have a buildup of instruments here, so we need more support. So I'm going to use oboe now to layer it. And I choose legato for this, and I just have to move the notes a tiny bit in. Okay, so for the second half of the first melody statement here, around bar 5, you double flute with oboe, and you play the same stuff, just keep the dynamics low, so they blend well, then resume the video. So after listening through the sketch again, I think I want to move the oboe one octave down, and I think I want to copy it also over to clarinet one, so they also double. So copy oboe down to clarinet, and then make sure that both of them are one octave down from the lute voice, so they're more spread out. Then resume the video. To make this a little bit more interesting, I think we're going to include some of the strings as well. So I'm going to take the alto flute. It doubles very well with viola, by the way. So I'm going to copy it down into viola, so let it play the exact same thing, same dynamics. Just make sure that it also plays legato. Okay, so copy the alto flute down to violas, make it play in a range that blends well, same exact notes, and resume the video. There should be more notes in the harmony supporting this melody, right? It's something in the harps, but it's not enough. So I'm going to use violins too, and I think I'm going to just hold a G here. Something like that. Make it start on the beat, and then use the gato. So what you should do now is just add this G. You can see on the keyboard here it's in the middle. And you can use your mod wheel if you don't have a breath controller and just keep it very subtle, easy to blend with the other voices. So do that and then resume the video. So sometimes I also like to blend libraries together. So you can see I have my main string library, then I have a blending library under here. So now I'm going to take violas down to the blending strings section, where I also find violas. Just copy it down. So I probably have to tweak the dynamics a little bit so it doesn't overpower the other string library. There we go. So if you have a blending library, or you would just like to expand the string sound a little bit, you can use another patch that also has the same range of strings, for example, violas here, and just add that on top and make sure that the dynamics blend well. Uh, sometimes You don't have to do this, but sometimes it helps to make the sound of your template a little bit more rich and full, and also fill out the inconsistencies of what your main library cannot do. And that was this counter line with melodic percussion here. I'm going to try to use that one now. So I'm going to copy the whole thing down. So can you think of any instrument that I can use to have almost like a bell soft sound as a counterline within the melodic percussion. I think you can. I think you're going to choose Celeste, for example, for this. Okay, that's good, but it's a little early. So I'm going to make it slower on purpose. What about one octave down? I like that better. A bit louder in velocity. So you see, I copied this voice from reeds, violins, and trumpets down into celeste. I moved it one octave down, and I increased the velocities. Do that, resume the video. I think now it's time to play uh, in pairs in woodwinds. Move the voices from solo instruments up to uh, pairs A2.
first, move the notes a bit, add legato. Okay, these were a little slow. Okay, so either you copy the voice directly from the flutes line here and down into flutes A2, or you record it again, the same melody, uh, but now using an A2 patch. And a little bit higher up in the dynamic range now, see that they're, they're quite pushing it because we know that it's going to be a full orchestra playing over here. And if they don't go high up, they will be just drowned out. So, you know, push it up and then resume the video. So I just want to make it quite simple. I'm just going to take the flutes A2 patch and copy it down to oboes, but this time I'm not going to split it into octaves. So that means that they play the exact same thing on top of each other. So one thing I'm going to do though is to remove the old CC curves and re-record it so it doesn't sound completely identical. Also tweak the transitions here a little bit so it's a little bit different from the flute. Let's record the oboes. So in the beginning it was overpowering the flute a little bit but then they blend it well. So I'm just going to take the first part and pull it down a tiny bit. Yeah, much better. Okay, it's your turn to record the oboe or just copy the MIDI down. Do a new curve for CC1 or CC2, whatever you use, so that they blend together. Then resume the video. In the beginning, the first statement, it's flute one, oboe one, clarinet one. So now I also want to have clarinets A2 uh, doing something together with the, uh, the woodwinds here in the, the other section. So I'm not going to make them play the same, but I'm going to experiment with a little line under. So I'm just going to make an open patch here and set it to legato. Let's see, something like... These are the notes you're going to use now. It's just a D sharp, down to D, then up to G, G sharp, and then back to G again. Do this and use an appropriate amount of CC1 so they blend well, then resume the video. So since I've already I thought about how to orchestrate this with my, my market tracks here and planning, and also a little bit by experience, I know that I probably need to copy this flute line down to flute one in addition to having it in A2 for it to be able to heard through the mix when they play all together. So for the second part here, I'm going to take flutes two. You can see them here. I'm going to copy them down to flute one again, and I'm going to combine these two. What you see here now is the first part is flute one playing alone. And then flute one plays together with flutes A2. Same notes, and I'm just gonna again re record the dynamics. So, this is the curve that I just recorded here, you can see it. So, I just copied the notes down, re recorded the dynamics, then blend them together. So you do that, then resume the video. Here are the new woodwind section. There's still not much going on in terms of what we can use. There are some small counter lines here that we should try to include. But I'm, I'm hearing more like a soaring quality to this piece. It's almost like a little bit of sadness, longing. So I'm not so really sure about these yet. But I do hear something and that is a counter line in the French horn. So what I'm going to do now is just try to play a little bit of a French horn under it. It's 
that works well. Just have to edit the MIDI a little bit. So put it on legato. Make sure the transitions are on beat. These are the notes that you use. It's just G sharp down to D, down to C, up to D, then a B, and back to C again. So record this, then resume the video. So since this is a soaring section, we need much more emphasis on the melody, and it should be more bold and strong, you know, just while keeping that sad quality a little bit. So flutes and oboes, that's not enough. So I'm going to use um, violins one also to record the melody voice on top of the flutes. So the intro here is too soft. So I'm just going to help it out a little bit, like this. This we're also a little bit slow. Okay, so before we record this, now just copy it down into Violins 2, go into it, and then mark everything one octave down, delete the dynamics. So we are going to re-record the dynamics before I give you the next task. Let's see if we have to clean this up. Nope, it looks good. So now it's your turn. You first write the melody in Violins 1, same range as flutes, and adjust dynamics, and then copy down, one octave down, into Violins 2, and then re-record dynamics, and then resume the video. So now it's time to do the violas. I'm just going to experiment a little bit. I know the chords are up here. But it's been a while and my mind is going crazy right now with ideas. So I'm going to keep using the melodic material, a little bit of the rhythm, some of the chords. But I'm also giving myself a lot of creativity and freedom right now because I'm in this flow state, right? All of the keys on the keyboard to see which notes I use. Not much to clean, maybe they're a tiny bit quiet. Let's see again. Yeah, at least in the beginning here, I want them to be a little bit more. So now it's time for you to record the violas starting on bar 7. These are the notes on screen here. And use an appropriate amount of CC1 or CC2 to blend it well with the rest of the strings. Maybe use harp as a reference. And then resume the video. Okay, so we are back again and we're going to do the celli now. Okay, let's see, maybe moving them a little bit in, adding the gato. Okay, so very simple stuff. You see the notes here, just D sharp, D, C, up to D sharp again. So record this, then resume the video. So it's time to record the basses. I'm going to go 
one more octave down. Pay attention to the keyboards. You see the notes that I'm using. You're going to do it in a minute. Choosing legato, fixing the transitions. This again. All right, these are the notes. Put them in, use the appropriate amount of CC1 or CC2 to make it blend well with the rest of the string section and resume the video. So remember this G note here that I just held in the intro? It's one of these notes that fits all the chords while they go through it. So I'm going to use my layering strings and I'm going to use violins one. So it works all until the half step change here in bar 11 that then we have to stop using it. Before we record this G here, I would also like to double um, the second part of the strings here. So we have violins one playing the melody, put them in there. Then we have violins two playing the melody and we put it here, but not the first long note. We just recorded that in this instrument. So while it's good, we need new CC curves. Okay, so it's a little bit behind. Now I'm going to record violins two, it's one octave down. Alright, so now we have a lot of stuff to do. First, you have to record this held G note in high strings. And then you have to double violins one and violins two in your doubling library, if you have it. Or you could play around with dynamics and volume if you feel that the strings need a little bit more presence. Sometimes that's solved by doubling. Other times we can just boost the library that is our main library and you will achieve a similar result. Then resume the video. So very soon this part of the track is over and we come into the next part and we need to mark that transition. And I like to use bass pizzicato for that. Okay, that's good enough. So that's, for me, that's on bar 11. You add a bass pizzicato like up in G sharp to mark the transition, you know, to they go up one half step and then there's new section with the new melody coming. So do that and then resume the video. So we already said that we are doing the transition work into the next part now. So as with the pizzicato, we also need some guidance for the woodwinds into the next section. So there's a half step increase. So from this B in flutes A2, I'm gonna just make it up to C here, and then I'm gonna let it fade out when they reach bar 12. So maybe something like uh, this. Let's do the same with oboes up to C. Stretch it to bar 12. 
and make the fade out nice and smooth like that. And then we do the same with clarinets, but they just go up to G sharp. And they also fade out in bar, start of bar 12. So we can do it from there. No, here. Right, so now it's your turn to add this extra C and this extra G sharp. The G sharp is in clarinets and the C is in both flutes and oboes. And fade it out so it vanishes, the sound goes away when bar 12 starts. And resume the video. And now we have to do the same with strings as well. So I'm going to open all these strings together. These are my strings. They look like this. And we see they overlap 12 a little bit. We don't want that. We want them to stop at around 12. So here we can see the dynamic curves as well. Yeah, it doesn't really fade out now, does it? So I'm going to go there. Let's see, something like this. Every voice is just pizzicato. These are the bases, I think. So we're going to do the same here. Start from 11, fade out to 12. So now you have to do all these yourself. Fix the CC1 or CC2, depending on how you record it. Fade out so they stop sounding, all of them, when bar 12's uh, plays. Then resume the video. Let's go back and listen to the piano sketch again here. Let's see, 12. So first of all, I hear a descending solo celli line. I'm going to record it. And now soon it's your turn. So follow the keys on the keyboard to see which notes I'm using. Not really sure about the ending there, but the first notes, they are correct. So these are the notes that you have to record in a descending celli line, starting on G, F, D sharp, D, C, A sharp, A, F, and up to G sharp, and a long G, and then you just hold it or go down. And the C is when we stop. So record this as good as you can and adapt CC curve so it fits the vibe of the piece and then resume the video. So one thing I like to have layered with solo instruments is often children's choir playing the same notes just behind so the solo instruments shines with their melody and their their tone but like a, a cloud around that tone is the the whole sound of a children's choir. So just listen to this. Good enough for now. Let's see. So if you have a chord patch that has legato and is high up in the register, like children's or women's usually, you can use the same melody as we did with solo cello and just play on top but keep it very soft so it just shines around the melody like I showed here. Then resume the video. If you remember when we recorded violins one, we left this G sharp here. So I'm going to record something more for this part because it's a little bit naked and alone. And I think using a string, high strings library, then also a descending line, but not the same notes can be nice. So this, for example, watch the keys. So 
it's almost working. We have to change uh, some of the notes, obviously. It's your turn now to add these melody notes and make sure to use the appropriate amount of CC1 so it doesn't overpower the melody, it just supports them. Then resume the video. So I'm getting close to the end, but I hear that this descending line should have even more help to give it more color. So I'm thinking also trumpet very softly playing the same as the boys choir. very softly, just adding a little bit of flavor, a little bit of tone. It's a little bit fast, so I'm going to move it a little bit in. Okay, these are the notes, should be quite familiar to you by now. Um, play them very softly in with the solo trumpet, and resume the video. So there is a rather nice counter voice in the sketch that I have forgotten about so far, but I'm going to use this because it sounds kind of nice. Maybe, yeah, trombones could, could work. Let's see. Yeah, so obviously way too soft, but... The notes are there, and they are correct. So now it's your turn to make this counterline. You find the notes in the sketch if you don't want to play it in, but you see them here, it's just G up to G sharp and then down, like we've done in many times in other voices as well, and record it quite soft so it can blend into the sketch easily. Resume the video. So maybe it can be interesting to combine it with some other texture. Let's see. Could be horn, of course, but horn is already playing, so that's just why I chose trombones. Maybe we can do... Celli Divisi is free and open. Let's copy it in and see how it sounds. Yeah, okay, that's nice, but what about one octave down? And then together... So a little bit earlier. Okay, good. And then a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. What about one octave up again? Yeah, like that better. So you see I copied trombone solo voice into Celli Divisi, or just another Celli instance, if you have no uh, you know, separate patch for Divisi. And then copy it in, make sure it blends, same range, you don't transpose it, but just make it a little bit quieter than the trombone. Then resume the video. The melody in this section in the sketch is in the same range that we put the descending solo celli line. They can play on top of each other, they will interfere with each other. So I think I'm going to have to pull the melody at least one or maybe two octaves down from that range to make it heard in the mix. So I like solo bassoon better because it hints of the melody, but it doesn't overpower the descending line. And I just want the listener to be reminded of the melodic world that we're in, but still they can have almost all their attention to the descending line because it's something new, it's fresh to them. If the listener understands, they feel smart. And when they feel smart, they feel happy and they like your music. You know, they understand. I understand this. I understand music now. So that's kind of important. So I'm going to use solo bassoon and going to make the the, the melody voice like soft in the background. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously there was a wrong note in there. You probably heard as well, but I'm going to fix it now. So this is the bassoon line that you have to record now. Either you could pull the MIDI from the sketch, but I advise you to re-record it yourself. Let me resume the video. So in the end, the melody is back to... with brass and a little bit more of a full orchestral sound in the end here. So let's do the, the flutes first. And we have to use, you know, flutes and everything for that because we want to build up Okay, so these are the mini notes for the last part of the melody. Put them into flutes, and you see the dynamics are quite far up there because it's going to be in context of the whole orchestra. So record this as good as you can, then resume the video. So now that we are back, I think I'm going to double it with oboe as well. Great, I'm going to use that take, I think. Put on some legato. Right, so you record the oboes like this. One octave downs from the flutes, same dynamic range, then resume the beat. So to give them more support, I think I'm going to use a celli as well to play the melody, maybe one octave down from Oboes or the same, I have to test it now. Well, that sounds about right. Just use that recording from the beginning. So in the mix. Maybe a tiny bit more loud, like that. Okay, so record the melody voice in the celli, just as you did with the oboes, adjust dynamics, then resume the video. Okay, so next up is basses, very simple. I think something like that. Let's try first. That works with legato. Yeah, easy. So record these notes in contrabasses. Very simple. G sharp to G, B to C, and then we're soon gonna finish this piece together. So using bass pizzicato to mark transitions or transitions between chords is always nice. There it is. So maybe down to, I think it's going to be an F down there. Good. And somewhere around here, it's going to be a C. Oh no, it's 19. There. Okay, so let's use these for now. G sharp on 11, F on 13 and C1 on 19, and adjust velocity so they blend well, and resume the video. So I'm going to make a brass pad now. I just set this track to sustain so I can play multiple notes at once. Something like that to begin with. I want to spread this out. So first I'm going to go down one octave and I'm going to take the middle voice 
back up one octave, like we talked about in the previous episode, like making open chords when you play low. So you follow these steps. First, you make the chords like this. Move them one octave down. Take the middle note, the middle voice, up one octave again, so it's open. You can use a single a trombone for this, or you can use a trombone's A2, depending on how rich you want the sound to be. I'm just going to copy this one, put it into a tuba. Let's see how it blends. Yeah, a little bit too early there. So when you're ready, your trombones should look like this and your tuba should look like this. So play them in, use the mouse, whatever you need, adjust dynamics so they blend and they're soft and round and, you know, fits the vibe that we want to achieve. And then resume the video. Before I start to add some simple percussion in the end, I just want to show you something that I often do. So this is the tuba voice. I mark it, I copy it, it starts on bar 15. Right, so tuba and contrabassoon, they can play the same range. So I copy this in and I make it legato. Then I go back and I take uh, this voice from trombones. I put them into bassoons uh, two. Starting there, set them to legato. Okay, nice. And then finally, I could take either of these, but I'm just going to use the top line for now. 15, I'm going to set it to clarinet 1. So to do that, copy the voices from tuba to contrabassoons and some of the voices from trombones into bassoons and clarinets, depending on what you like and how it sounds in your template. So what you see on screen now is just the same chords that I use for the trombone choral choir thing, but I just put them into male choir and by themselves. So it's the same notes, I just gave them a new CC curve and try to make it blend into the full, full soundscape here. Great. So copy the voices from trombones into your, you know, choir patch if you have one. Starting on bar 15 is just the same as the other. Use appropriate CC and then resume the video. So just to spice things up a little bit in the end here, I've added tubular bells on bar 11 with the G sharp and on bar 17 with the G. They're almost not noticeable. So add these voices, G sharp in bar 11 and G in bar 17. So add this and resume. So I'm also hearing this cymbal swell that builds up towards the crescendo where there's a full string sec section playing. Yeah, something like that. Very simple. Let's clean up the MIDI a bit. Maybe the curve can be something like this. There we go. So you add this one, it's on starts on bar 10 to 11. Whatever symbol swell or sustained symbols you have to just build this leading into the next section. And I think also at bar 11, that marks the transition into the new softer part, I'm going to use a timpani. 
you know, after that, a symbol swell to just say, hey, there's something new happening here. All right, so it's a G sharp on timpani on bar 11. It's a hit there. So you do this, and then we'll do the final small tweaks together. So this is the final tweak for today, I think. Just some improvements with the pizzicato. I added some notes here, you can see, and improved the velocity a bit. And then the final hit on 19 is a very subtle one in C1. And I should let it ring as long as it can. So the final thing you want to do now is just add these notes, tweak the velocities so they fit your samples, and then we're going to finish. <laughs>